No, I won't wait. I'm not going to wait. <laughs> I am not a patient person. We'll start with that. Okay, are we ready? Are you good? Excited? Is everybody having a good tech meeting? I feel like I got the best time slot because, like, you guys are awake now. The coffee is kicking. But you're not so hungry that it's time for lunch. You really get it. Right. I feel like I saw it about eight. <laughs> so we're going to talk about social media, which I love. Uh, that's me. That's you? Um, it is. It doesn't look like you. I know, I know. I found a stock photo of this girl with pink hair. <laughs> yeah. uh, she looks just like me. There's a chair over here. It's I in front of the class. <laughs> yeah. Do you have like lots of variations of different signs that you're pointed to? That you have well, see, on? this is just one photo. <laughs> and then I use that Photoshop to my friends. And I just I just put different texts in there. That's what I mean. How yeah. many different I texts do you have? Them. I do it for webinars all the time too. This is totally off topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I put <laughs> a lot. I took these photos and I was like, I'll just point at them and then we can put words there. <laughs> I thought it was very clever. It was very clever. It was very clever. All right. So before we start, I do. You should take one of your friends. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I I have the barrier to pull that off. Uh, I do this at the beginning of every presentation, and this is me like, don't pay attention to me, slide. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to do at events like this, and it's use social media to connect with other people. That's how I met these people over here. Well, not him. Those people. <laughs> I knew him before that. Um, and I did that by just following hashtags, and that's a great way to build your network offline by using social media at events. You're all, you immediately have something in common which is like half the battle. <laughs> so use the hashtag, include me. The more tweets I get, the better mood I'll be in later when we're buying drinks. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, so take advantage. I, I have like 100 tweets right now that says, I'll take a drink, don't I? <laughs> I just put mine on there. I mean like, one margarita, thank you. <laughs> just tweet me, order it now. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'm a social media strategist, which is a really boring way of telling you, I teach people to do social media with less sleeves. If you go to my website, you'll see the word less douchebaggery a lot. Um, because people think that social media and Twitter and Facebook and all of the networks that fall under that umbrella are just like megaphones that you can like yell stuff at people. And they're not. They're, they're telephones. They're meant to have conversations with people both ways. Uh, so that's what I do. I'm a podcast host, so I like love this place because it's podcast goodness. Uh, I also do a web show called Take Mike TV, uh, and I am huge <coughs> in building communities with your social media. That's why I love events like this, because they're community driven, community attended, and community run. So that is pretty much social media success to me, is anytime you can build a community around your brand. So let's get started. Yes, we have an LS. Um, this is always my most popular site because of an LS. I'm only minorly offended by it. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go back a little bit because before you can start really thinking about your social, and especially if you're thinking I'm wasting a ton of time on social media right now, it's because you haven't considered these things and you're doing what I like to call throwing stuff at the internet. And the internet is not particularly friendly to having stuff thrown at it. You'll find it gets people to ignore you. No one wants to have stuff thrown at them. Don't throw things at me. Um, so we need to go back. We need to look at our ideal client. Who are they? Where are they already? Because that's like the fastest way to figure out what network you should be on. And the reality is, is there's a really easy way to find this stuff out. Ask them. They'll tell you. Uh, if you have any sort of audience already for your blog or your social media channels as they are or an email list, simply ask them, what are your favorite websites to check out? What are your favorite podcasts to listen to? What are your favorite social media channels? Why? They want to be heard. They want to tell you. Take advantage of that information. Uh, also, if you look at your analytics, again, like <laughs> Anne did pointing to Perry's topic for 15 today, uh, a lot of times you'll see where you're getting a ton of traffic from. Those are the places you should be doubling down on, because those are the places where people are already engaged with your stuff. Next, what kind of content do they want to see? You know, this is really relevant, because if you're putting out written content, <laughs> but all of your target market wants videos, <laughs> they will not read your written content. I don't care how good it is. And honestly, this is why I put out 
out all kinds of content. I put out video content once a week. I do two podcasts a week. And I guess post a couple times a month, and that's written content. And I do that because my audience is super smart and likes to see things in lots of different ways. And so I, I change it up so I can meet those different markets and meet those people sort of where they are. Uh, so check out what kind of content you have. It's also going to be really relevant to what network you're on. If you have really word-heavy content with very little visual, Pinterest is going to be a colossal waste of your time. <laughs> because it's not pretty, nobody's pinning it. <laughs> this just it. All right? Uh, but if you, if you look at places like Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, LinkedIn will love your word-heavy content. They love to read over Yeah, they do. They do? <laughs> Blog heaven over here. Uh, on this website, if you do video, I'm going to smack you if you're not on YouTube. It's like huge. Uh, also, you know, Vine, Snapchat, Instagram has video. Make sure you're taking advantage of the content you're putting out because all of those places are there for you already. Okay, once per week, I want you to lay your foundation. Now, We've talked a little bit today. I don't know. Was anybody else in here? <coughs> Ants talk? I'm only talking about Ants talk a lot. But I'm not <laughs> no one. <laughs> I'm not here. Whatever. But, uh, People are totally speaking about that. We talked a little. That's what all me. We were talking a little bit about uh, scheduling content. When you put out a blog post, do you just push it via your RSS feed, or are you going out and interacting live? And I have a big proponent of mixing both. Go in and put down what I call a social media foundation. So that when you go in to engage, you're not spending time marketing, you're spending time engaging. Because that's where you'll find a lot of that time stuff that I talked about in the title coming out. Because if you're not able to go in and engage, so you end up spending two hours instead of 20 minutes. That's a big difference when you talk about billable time. And I think in billable time. <laughs> so that foundation is going to assist of, oh, I have a pointer. Promotional <laughs> posts. I'm really yes. fascinated with a pointer. Could you have on that yet? Uh, your content, and then the three T's, which are tips, tricks, and tools. So these are the things that, there's. we all have that list of questions that all of the people ask us. <laughs> okay, so those tweets, those Facebook updates, those LinkedIn updates, they never expire because new people are joining your audience all the time, and they still need to know that. They're those things that you kind of consider your FAQ. So those are those things that people, you get on client calls, for the day, and it's like, same question, same question, same question. Go in and answer those in your social. Share blog content you've written answering those questions. Share it over and over again. Because I do what I do, I share a lot of my favorite resources. You know, I talk about Hootsuite. I talk about Buffer. I knew I'd get a head nod out of you. <laughs> you know, I talk about, uh, I use Scrub Social for a long time. Uh, I talk about my favorite tools. I talk about Canva. Uh, my favorite books to read about social. I talk about that stuff because it also helps my audience. And the most important part, I should put this in bigger font. Other people's content. So I'll take a minute and say it now. Other people's <laughs> content. Other people's content is almost more important than your content. Because what you're doing is you're building a relationship with the person that shared that content. You are building a relationship with your community as somebody who wants to provide information without always being like, then you can buy more. <laughs> you know, <coughs> doing that nice mix. And that other people's content doesn't have to be your competitor's content. I put out a lot of content by other social media experts because I'm not an expert at everything. I learn all the time. I love reading social media books. Um, I'm super excited because I have a preview copy of Guy Kawasaki's new book. I'm eating oh. it up. I was like, ha, ha, ha. And I know a lot of the stuff is in there, but I learned something in every book I read. I religiously watch Ask Gary Vee with Gary Vaynerchuk. Religiously. Like it's church, people. Because that stuff is awesome. So share that stuff. But also share other relevant things. You know, if you're somebody who is, somebody shout what they do. Anybody now. <coughs> Career coach. Transition coach. Career coach? Yes. I'll leave up. We're going to go career coach because I probably have an example in my head, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sharing other things besides what she normally shares that support that transitional time in your life. Saving before you leave your job so you can start your own business. That may not be something she writes about because she's not a finance person, but I bet she knows some finance people who put out some great content that would support that. But her community will eat it up. 
So that other people's content is a critical, critical piece to that foundation. Go in and do this once per week. Sit down, force yourself to do it. It will take less and less time the longer you do it, I promise. Uh, and, and get this stuff scheduled out. Use a tool like Hootsuite. And get this foundation stuff scheduled so that when you go in to engage, <laughs> you can do it. So you're going to schedule your promotional posts. You're going to schedule your TPPs. I schedule other content as I find it using the Buffer app because I don't have a ton. I don't want to sit down and find that all at once. Good content comes out all week long, so I just buffer it. Um, but my promotional posts are scheduled through Hootsuite. And my 3T stuff, anything I generate over and over again, I use Social Inc. because I can have a whole bunch of tweets in there. And after they're done tweeting, it starts them over again. And I have a ton of tweets in there to do that. There are things like, this is a really great tool. Check out so-and-so's post on whatever, because that stuff is going to be timeless. And because there's so much of it, you're not seeing it two days apart. You're seeing it months apart. And think about how many people you follow on Twitter currently. <laughs> you likely are not seeing everything I posted. Let's be real. As cool as I am, you're not seeing everything. Wait, what did you say you used to get those three people? <coughs> I use social oomph. It's social O-O-M-P-H. So you use different tools? I use different to tools. Schedule different. Yeah. Why don't you use one? Because there's <laughs> not one tool I can find that does all the things I want it to do the way I want it to do it. Thank you. If Hootsuite, you can take this back to you. If Hootsuite and Buffer, well, Hootsuite and Buffer have their, Hootsuite stepped up with some of those kind of pieces. If Hootsuite and Social Oomph had a management baby, I would pay $300 a month for that. Seriously. <laughs> so what, can I, I, I don't want to take you off topic. No, 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 you're fine. Social, I don't know. The, uh, what is it? The Social Oomph? Okay. I have not ever heard of that. And we do social media. So what does that do that some of these other ones don't have? <laughs> what it does is it regenerates tweets. So I have all of those tweets in an Excel document. Well, technically it's a drive spreadsheet, but and I just upload those to social and it randomly tweets them out. And then when it's tweeted all of those, it starts over again. So my things like quotes, those tips, my favorite tools, favorite tricks. Those kind of things that are timeless and can get tweeted out over and over again and are not, you know, these aren't, these aren't blog posts necessarily. <coughs> I do have one group of my old content because I've done 108 episodes of my podcast now and I don't want to go through and tweet each of those every week. Um, so it allows me to automate that. So again, when I go in to engage, this is what we're going to talk about next, I have time to engage. I don't have to spend so much time on this foundation. When I go in weekly to do this foundation, all I'm doing is a promotional post <coughs> and then the add other content as I find it using Buffer. Because I like it and I like the way the little girl extension works. There's a girl so, extension that you can do. I know, but it doesn't work for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> is there an extension in here? There is yeah, a yes. Google Chrome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, oh, yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's just, it's not. I'm sorry. So you use for Buffer. You use uh, an extension on your browser. Yeah, I almost so never go into the Buffer. <laughs> okay, but if you're tweeting for different businesses, does it allow you to specify who you're tweeting for? Well, if you have them under one account, you can choose which accounts when you use the extension. Okay. Otherwise, you would, it's going to tweet from whatever you're assigned it to. Um, I don't do this for my management clients. For my management clients, I'm going in and doing it myself okay. because I'm. Much more conscientious. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm lazier with my own stuff. As somebody in social media, you understand this. <laughs> yeah. We're never as good at taking care of our stuff as we are other people's. Uh, so I don't use Buffer for that. I take the time, I invest time. If I find something as I'm out and about in Feedly reading stuff, I will go in and schedule it in whatever tool we use for them. Because I give my clients use their own. So if they ever went anywhere, they don't have to reinvent what we built. <coughs> Did anybody else have a question? I don't think I said this. You could just yell them at me. I am not particularly. Have you used except Edgar? you? Have you used Edgar? Yes, I used Meet Edgar. I met Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> if it and Hootsuite had a baby, <laughs> I'd be okay. super happy. Gotcha. My problem with Edgar, and this is just between us and the internet, <laughs> uh, is that it does what social oomph does. In a much prettier layout, I'll give it that. Social oomph is ugly. 
no no squabbles about that. It's not attractive. And Meet Edgar is very pretty, and it does that same sort of generation regenerating old tweet stuff. It costs like fifty dollars a month. Social it costs me like thirty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And I have no way of like inside of that also like responding to things or just scheduling things. It's just doing that one piece. So I have a hard time as a business owner, as I'm sure a lot of you, paying more for something that's going to do less than another platform will. Yeah. No matter how pretty it is. But if social link could get like the designers that work at the editor, <laughs> I'm going to sign up. All right, so now we're going to talk about another scheduling piece, but this is the part where you're live. This is scheduling time for you to go in, because it's really, really, really easy to go, oh, I'll do that later. I'll jump into Twitter tonight. That'll be fine. But then it's like 11.30, and none of your audience is there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I actually schedule chunks of my time throughout the day, usually 15-minute <coughs> chunks, and I give myself a really actionable task. Right now, I'm going to go into Google+, Plus and I'm going to spend time in my communities. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Google+, it's my favorite network, so that's what I used. LinkedIn, and I'm going to go in the groups. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to network. I'm going to answer questions. I'm going to connect with people. I'm going to spend time <coughs> doing that. So I don't look at the news. I don't see what everyone else is doing, which is easier on LinkedIn than to say on Facebook. Um, but like with when I go into Facebook, I go directly to the group. Do not look at the news feed where all the time suck lies. <laughs> One more BuzzFeed quiz and I'm out. Um, so give yourself that actionable step and that scheduled time. Because then you go in and you spend 15 minutes and you went, oh, I did what I was supposed to do. Instead of, oh, I spent two hours and I still haven't sent anybody that message. And also you don't have to worry about going in and updating your status with your latest blog post or a webinar you're doing or a live event you're hosting because that's all in your scheduled stuff. So this is literally you just going in and engaging and connecting with people. So do this in your groups, your communities. On Twitter, a lot of times I will put Twitter chats on my schedule so I can go and go to a Twitter chat. But if you don't schedule it, you won't do it. I promise. Uh, and engage. You know, if you're going to post something live, make it a question. And then... Answer their responses. Oh, yeah. Because that's the part where everybody kind of jumps off the ship. They're like, I'm going to ask this question, I'm going to get everybody super engaged, and I'm going to be in a two-hour meeting. Because, see, I engaged with you, I answered your question, I took the action you wanted me to take, and you didn't show up, I'm out. People want to be heard. Remember that in every part of your social media. People want to be heard. The same is true for engagement, the same is true with complaints, the same is true with customer service. People just want to be heard. So listen. Am I doing my time? What is this over? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm bored. 1040? Just whatever. It's 1040 right now. Is it over 1040? No, it wasn't. Oh, no. I believe it. Oh, You're at 11. 11. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I really didn't sorry. know. I'm very unprofessional person today. So we're going to talk about outsourcing. Because I feel like this is where people think they have to hand it all over and not be responsible for any part of it, or they have to do it all themselves. And there is really a happy medium. A lot of my clients outsource the whole enchilada. But some of them also outsource... Sorry, I'm a little hungry. He said enchilada. <laughs> Remember when I got kicked out of texting you? <laughs> Just my presentation. You know? um, but a lot of them outsource that social media foundation part I talked about. They outsource the boring stuff and they do the engagement part because they are the center of their brand. How many of you are like your brand? Like you're, you're going at it, it's just you. You have to be you and that's hard to outsource. So if you really want to outsource something, start with that foundation piece so you can be you. Any questions? A lot of questioning movements over there. I apologize, but we've got another thing that popped over. What's the foundation piece? Real fast. Uh, your foundation is going to be what you lay. That's your promotional, your content, your three teeth, your tips, tricks, and tools, and other people's content. That's the stuff that has to go out. Those are your marketing messages, 
like I said, your content, that's the stuff that has to go out. And it generally isn't as like sexy as the other content, as engaging. Uh, if you craft really great posts, it can be engaging, and I encourage that. Uh, but it's kind of the stuff that has to happen. It's the less fun part of social media, in my opinion, but the necessary part, because otherwise you're just connecting and you're not selling anything. And I think most of us are probably here to ultimately sell something. It's super fun, by the way. <laughs> Did you break the speaker? <laughs> no problem. Are there any other questions? Because I think I'm almost done. I am almost done. So, with outsourcing, you know, figure out what in outsourcing works for you, and then making sure you're asking whoever you outsource that to to be aware of what's going on and what they're doing. Not just like ask them if they know what they're doing and then keep paying them every month. Like check in. Have them send you analytics reports. They should know what that means and they should be able to explain them to you. If they can't, fire them immediately. Because they should know what's going out, why it's going out, and what the effects are of that. Okay, so I'm like running through this apparently. Does anybody have questions? Or am I just that thorough? I, I have what? a question. So somebody recently told me to shut the F up. What should I reply to that? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. Was this on Twitter? This is on Twitter. Okay. Respond <laughs> right, right now. Flaming Say, me. at the top of the screen, you will find an unfollow button. Feel free to use it. Hashtag, shut the F up. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say. But that's my branch. <laughs> with people who I haven't met in real life on my page. 
I'd love to connect with you on my page or on my profile. I'd love to connect with you on my page. And a lot of times they'll go over and like my page. Um, you just you have you have to draw that line and then tell people what it and is. And then on Twitter, do you have like? I actually have a private account that's locked. You you have you you have to make the separation. No one else will. So you have to decide where those no-go zones are, and you put those here, and you put those there. Yeah, I was gonna add. You can um, create. Uh, oh, I'm gonna the, the term, but in Facebook you can you can create different audiences. Yeah, like lists. Your friends. So yeah. if you have you know certain things that you just want to post to your coworkers, and you put them in a list, and then when you go to post that, you select that audience. And I do exactly that. Anybody who I don't know well gets put in acquaintances. And so when I share a picture of my kid, it generally goes to friends except acquaintances. So they don't see it. Um, so you can you can organize that way. If you don't want to, if you're afraid that a button's not gonna get pushed or something, I would suggest literally separate accounts. Because that's how you stay away from accidentally posting your rant about some guy. And being like, oh, well, that probably was like, like the example from Chrysler about the guy that posted about yeah. that, that probably right. should have double checked the account before he posted. Exactly, because you know he didn't want to post it to that account. And, and that's why posted to his personal account. Yeah. And that's why I have separate logins. Like my Hootsuite account doesn't have any of my private stuff attached to it. I'm not post if I'm in Hootsuite, we are in non-personal land. I'm not ranting about traffic. Although I did rant about Kim Gray on my regular profile. <laughs> <laughs> it is not news that she was naked. People do it every day. <laughs> yes, Dana. Um, as far as getting more likes to your business page, do you find that you have had had to use Facebook ads in order to effectively do that as fast as you wanted to? I don't like Facebook ads for likes. Oh, yeah. I like Facebook ads for something else, and that usually garners me likes as well. Okay. Because if I post a Facebook ad for a webinar I'm doing, I will get likes to my page. <coughs> but when I get Facebook likes, and those people will engage because they also signed up for the webinar. Whereas when I do a Facebook likes or a Facebook ad for likes, I'm getting all sorts of garbage. But I'm not one of those people who went in and deleted a bunch of people because I don't have that kind of free time. Yeah. Uh, back to your point about different passwords or different, I go different devices. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes for you to separate personal and professional, just make it as hard as possible for them to overlap. <laughs> there was another question back here. Wait. Well, go ahead. I was, I, was, I was trying to hurry up and read your um, bio to see if you answered it here. But I'm, I'm really interested in you as kind of a personality and how one you keep track of all of this social media stuff that's ever changing. That seems to be a time suck for me is keeping on top of it all. Um, and so um, how you do that. And then second question is, what do you see for the future of your business as all this technology evolves? Okay, save the second question, because I will so forget it. I'm just going to be real. Okay. I will forget it. The first okay. question, though, is how I keep up. Yeah. I suggest all of my clients, find the people you like who know stuff, and let them tell you. <laughs> I read a lot of really boring websites, and a lot of really boring books, and a lot of really boring analytics reports. You don't want to read those. Follow me. I'll tell you what's relevant. And don't just follow me. Follow other people. I talk a lot about Google Plus and Twitter because I like them best. I don't talk a ton about Facebook. I talk some because I teach a little. But most of my content you'll see around Google Plus. You will see almost no LinkedIn content from me except people I've had on my show because it's not my favorite. Um, so find the people who are experts in those places and connect with them. Let them sort of filter that information to you because there are a billion people who do what I do. And you will like some of them, and you'll be so so about some of them, and you will flat out hate some of them because some of them are douches. <laughs> <laughs> but find who you like and connect with them, follow them, and let them teach you because you will find a lot more information sticking if you're getting it from someplace you like. And the second question was where I see my business going. You remember? <laughs> I see my ego below. It's funny. <laughs> I haven't had any wine yet. Um, <laughs> so. My yeah. business has transitioned a lot. I do management on a very small scale now. And we work with your clients for a higher dollar. But a lot of what I do is teaching now. I do events like this. I have three rock star guys where I teach people how to do Google Plus, Facebook, and have a podcast. Um, and so that's how I've transitioned. And the way I get to keep doing that is that I keep learning. Luckily, I picked to teach something I really like to learn about, which is why I do it. Uh, and so that's, that's what I do. I keep up and I, I evolve. And... Like my guides that I sell and I teach, 
They come with lifetime access that, and I update them. Like, it's important to me to enable people to be able to use social media confidently and effectively. And they can only do that if I'm giving them current information. So I learn all the time and I share what I learn. How do you monetize that? Well, the guides all cost $200 a pop. <laughs> uh, and then I have my one-on-one -on -one sessions. I have a social media-based mastermind that I teach. And so basically, if you want to learn from anything but my free content, you pay to play. Okay. And that sounds kind of funny, but it's not. No, it isn't. <laughs> I put out a ton of free content. I put out two podcasts a week. I start a weekly uh, video show. I do guest posts a few times a month, which is a few times a month more than I would like to write. Uh, can you start writing all my guest posts? Yes. <laughs> Let's work on that. So, do you think I would agree with you, which I don't? I need a we book can find to write, write up. Um, so, that's, I, I put out so much free content that when somebody comes to me for various specific one on one advice about their business, I'm happy to tell them this is what I charge. If you're not happy with that, there was 108 episodes of the show, 12 episodes of the video show, and like legions of blog posts from forever. Okay, which leads me to just one more question. Sweet. How I do you questions. sell? That is that is actually what you're selling. You're selling the time. <laughs> how do you make someone value the time that it took you to know all that stuff versus going and taking the time themselves? Because most of the people who come to me ready to pay yeah. have already spent way too many of their billable hours right. figuring it out on their own. Okay. And they're still wasting time. Right. Okay. <laughs> you just have still to for that process. And I'm a big believer that you can find literally anything you want on the internet for free. Google has made almost every information-based business pretty much obsolete. But the thing is, people will pay to get information from you. People don't, you can find out how to set up a Google Plus page anywhere. People hire me because they want me to tell them. They want to spend time talking to me. For better or worse on their judgment, <laughs> they want to spend time with me. You see why now, right? <laughs> Go ahead. So we were just talking and I mean, Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. And we are of the opinion that people are going to start jumping ship because social media has become such a negative space. I have many friends, and I myself did it all summer. I got off social media because I was ending every day wanting to slit my wrist because people were posting, well, if you want to be a bitch, then... It's not the network's network. fault. It's the people you're following. So if you have a problem with the content you're seeing, change the people you're following. Well, that is what I ended yeah. up doing. I stopped liking I have things. a strict no douchebag policy. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I'll unfollow you. <laughs> but I think people like us, we know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't think probably at least 50, 60 percent of people don't understand how, how to block, how to unfollow, how to stop notifications, how to unfriend without offending someone in your real life. <laughs> you know. Like, well, if you feel the need to unfriend them, maybe we need to talk about real life too. Um, <laughs> it's just very overwhelming, <laughs> yeah. and it's so pervasive. Yeah. That it's it very difficult to draw face. out those little pieces of gem that you actually care about yeah. Yeah. versus the 95% trend. And this is really horrible to say because we do this for a living. But we were talking about how we think more people now want to get, based, like, I would rather sit down and have coffee with you than, you know, and I do that. Facebook. I, I do that all the time. Yeah. I go have coffee with people in real life. People who live in faraway lands, we have Skype coffee dates. And I connect with them because. Then, when I see their face fly through my timeline, I pay attention. I'm like, oh, I know her, she's cool. Um, I don't think there's going to be a mass exodus because of the negativity. I think, if anything, you're going to see an evolution of people being choosier about how they get content, and they're going to start wanting to learn how to get away from those negative people. They're going to, you know, you see all the day, you, all the time, if you click into, you know, how to unfollow, you will see a billion articles because a lot of people are, are looking for that. People are getting more informed. Yes, but in my I opinion. think the problem is people like us know that we have to have the latest version of Firefox or a Chrome or an <coughs> Explorer. Don't say that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but and we you know, know that. that. We understand that the unfollow or the unthink is in a different place on your phone and on your iPad and on your big screen. We get that, but I think the majority, you cannot. 
reach all of the different the safaris and the apple people and the AOL users. And, That's right, you know, there's an internet explorer. Slow your roll. Um, <laughs> no, personally, I give people a lot of credit. I think they're trying to learn. I think they're going to try and, and know more. I am not somebody who's going to make a judgment that they're like everybody's dumb. Uh, so I think that people are getting more educated. People are asking more questions and they're, they're finding out how to empower themselves with these tools. So like I said, I think what you're going to find is you're going to find an evolution of how people are using it, not that they're using it other places. Question? No. Me, since I'm just getting to the stage of actually creating my business and trying to sell this marketing, um, I have come to realize that there are actually social, certain social networks that I don't usually go up to, such as Twitter, or Snapchat, or LinkedIn. But once I do actually make it to that goal for my business, would you actually recommend me all the other social networks other than Facebook, Instagram? I believe in the power of two. Choose two primary networks, and those are your ones that you are full lore on. Those are the ones you, you use regularly, and choose two secondary networks. And those are the ones you check in less regularly. I use Google Plus and Twitter as my main ones, Facebook and LinkedIn as my second. <coughs> All of the other networks, I do go in like Ello. I don't know if anybody is around with, for Ello. They're new. You're excited, new stuff. I think it's okay, that was the end of the presentation. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. No, I went in and I, I got my username because I at the safety nurse everywhere. That doesn't mean I use it every day, but I am protecting my brand because it's rented space. Mm -hmm. Anybody can go in and show up. So I would say go in and protect your brand, but don't spend a ton of time investment in every single network. Focus on where your people are. There was another one back here. Yeah, I do have a quick one. Kind of piggybacking off of that. Um, Social media makes me want to slip my wrist for different reasons. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, this is a very violent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to move you up now. So, so self-diagnosed uh, ADD. I, I can't, just can't keep up sometimes. So I usually my my remedy is giving it to my business partner or hiring somebody to do a lot of it. Uh, but you know I will schedule it in my calendar to do something for a client. And I'll jump in front of uh, you know my laptop, and I'm cursed by Yosemite, which pops up everything, and it's like, oh, shiny object. And I'm like, I spent two hours, that time frame is gone, and I've done nothing for the client. So in your in your expertise, since you are- I like to be at an expert. He's a good answer now. <laughs> so what do you do personally to, to kind of keep yourself sane and focused on a specific I am super shiny object syndrome. Like, super. Like, ooh, notification. <laughs> ooh, notification. Ooh, text. And now you get phone calls and texts on right. too? So it's bad. evil. You can turn that stuff off, though. Right. And I have. Okay. Because I have no self control. <laughs> so, it is, it's a matter of turning it off. And then I actually go so far as when I'm in stuff, I have a self control app that blocks Facebook. So, when I try to go in it, it tells me I'm not allowed. Oh. And you can do that for a set amount of time. What's the self control? I think it's called self control. But it's, yeah. it's like black and it has this like skull and drop goes on. It's like do not enter. <laughs> and it, it's called self control, right? It is. My kids use it. Yeah, but like when I go, wow. when I go, and I will say, okay, I have two hours to work on this client strategy layout. Self control app. So when I go to Facebook, it's like, oh no, you don't. Yeah. Go back to work. Yeah, I mean. It, Taking that one step further, I mean, I know you guys use a ton of different uh, tools, and, and I use most of them, but it's like you're getting away, you're using a tool to kind of consolidate everything so that you're not yeah. doing everything. So what do you find the most beneficial? Which tool? or Hootsuite is my favorite, okay. because it allows me to do the most stuff. I am. I'm still <laughs> looking for swag. I treat it like... I, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I only one left. She saved it for me. Hootsuite is, is my favorite because it does the most. And if it could add, add that regeneration thing, like I, was, I would pay it all the money in the world. Like, just take my money. She's listening. I know. I, that's why I keep saying it. Uh, but no, but for me, that's, it's the easiest to comprehend. And also, I really like, in Hootsuite, for Twitter specifically, and this is a random off topic of Twitter, but when I do those 15 minute chunks of time, I have a whole tab called Twitter list, and I go to the specific list of my ideal clients, and I tweet with them. Like, I, I really have it that closed down so that I am not going, oh, notification, oh, notification, oh, she shared a funny video from YouTube, oh, cats and ladies pointers. Like, <laughs> like, let's focus. So I, I work with a lot of coaches. Most of my clients are online. They are coaches. They are selling information products. So I have a whole Twitter list called 
potential clients. That's private, so they can't see that they're potential clients. But I start engaging with them because they see the way, like, way I do it, and then we have a consult, and then they buy stuff. It's very manipulative, but super engaging and friendly. <laughs> So, any more questions? Because I think yeah. it's like literally made me go away. Yeah. <laughs> so, just yeah. a minute uh, plug for you. What's your um, podcast? It's Hit the Mic with the Stacey Harris. So if you go to thestaceyharris.com slash hit the mic, you'll find all 180 episodes. And there'll be a new one on Tuesday about my favorite online tools, like how I run my business. So, if you want new, fun things to distract you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, are you on YouTube? I am on YouTube. YouTube.com you, slash hit the mic. Do you make money from YouTube? I don't. I don't monetize any of my videos. My podcast is not sponsored. My videos are not monetized. I am what I market. I am what I promote. I want you to spend money with me. Right. So I point you to me. That's, but that's a personal choice. You can do whatever you want. Disclaimer here. But I, I, I am my own show sponsor. So but YouTube, if people start advertising around your show, and they split that money with you. Yeah, you can monetize your videos and you can make money and all that good stuff. But, you, you, but you have you to run a commercial. Control, you lose, you, yeah. Oh. You have to run a commercial, which, with what I, my purpose is, my goal for my videos, <laughs> is not to make money. It's to, grind, gr to gain clients. Okay. So I want to have complete control of what I do. Same thing with sponsoring my show. I want to talk about what I want to talk about. That's why I started my own show. <laughs> I don't want somebody else to be like, well, no, you can't swear in your episodes because that is not good. Okay. That's what the unsubscribe about this one. Uh, and I don't swear in all my episodes, I swear. I swear. And like, I swear in every dozen episode. Of ones. <laughs> and they all say explicit, so don't listen to those ones with kids. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't monetize that way because for my goal with that material is to get you to my website, to get you to my email list, to buy my product, to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. In that order. Love it. Anything else? That's Just a roaring round of applause.